I am going to be talking about GNU Emacs Calc, so let's get right into full calc mode to ensure that everything is nice and large and easy to see. More specifically, I am going to be talking about trigonometric functions, and just so you know, the default angular mode for calc is degrees. You can easily toggle into radian mode using the key binding M for mode, R for radians, and toggling back into degree mode using MD. I'm gonna take 30 degrees, pass it to the top of the stack. Now I just noticed that I'm in algebraic mode. So I'm just going to toggle back into numerical mode here using the MA key binding. And now I'm gonna use the uppercase S for the sine function, which is going to take the value at the top of the stack, pass it in as the argument of the sine function, and then evaluate it. Now to find the inverse sine of 0.5 or the arc sine, I'm going to use uppercase I followed by uppercase S. Now you see here that I get an exact value, so I must be in symbolic mode. So to get a quick numerical approximation, I can use uppercase N. And just a reminder that you can toggle between the numerical mode and the symbolic mode using MS. So I was originally in symbolic mode, but I'm going to toggle back into numerical mode with MS. Uppercase C will find the cosine of 30 degrees. Uppercase I followed by uppercase C will find the inverse cosine. And for the next example, maybe we should toggle back into symbolic mode using the key binding MS. We're gonna take 30, place it at the top of the stack. We're gonna use uppercase T to find the tangent and then uppercase I, uppercase T to find the inverse tangent. Now, one of the incredible features of calc is to be able to do conversions, and it even does conversions between degrees and radians. So if I wanna take my angle of 30 degrees and convert it to radians, I can use C for convert and R to radians. And it's really easy to convert radians into degrees using C for convert, D to degrees. And it even works for radian angular measurements using pi. So uppercase P for pi, four on top of the stack, finding the quotient, there's my angle pi over four, and then I can use my C for convert, D to degrees, and I get my angle in degrees. So I think I'm in symbolic mode. So uppercase N to get the numerical approximation. In fact, let's go right ahead and just uh, toggle back in to numerical mode with MS. Again, I'm going to take uppercase P this time, notice the approximation and then I'm going to place four on the stack, finding the quotient, and again, using CD to convert into degrees, and this time I get 45 degrees directly. All right, it is now time to shift over to a radian mode, and at the same time, I'm also going to toggle back into symbolic mode, and the reason is I want to show you how I can achieve an exact value by passing the angle of pi over over four into the cosine function. So let's get that angle of pi over four at the top of the stack, uppercase C for cosine, and it returns the principal square root of two over two. There is that exact value of the angle. And I can use uppercase I, uppercase C to return the inverse of that cosine as an approximation. Okay, two more examples. The second last example is to show you how to make use of the fraction mode of the calculator. So if I take pi over three and pass it into the cosine function, it returns 0.5. However, if I toggle the calculator into fraction mode using the key binding MF and take that same angle of pi over three and pass it into the cosine function one more time, we see that the cosine function returns a half. Notice that we have the numerator separated by the denominator using a colon. The last thing that I wanted to talk about today is how to reference a value on the stack given its index position. To get started, I'm gonna place some angles onto the stack. So pi over two, pi over three, pi over four, and pi over six. And the idea will be to reference a specific angle, and we are going to use the dollar sign notation for this. However, I need to get into algebraic mode first using the MA key binding, 
and that will bring me into the mini buffer where I will be able to type in the sine function directly and then use dollar sign to reference the angle at position one on the stack. Now that's pi over six and that just happens to be the top of the stack and that returns one half. Let's try it one more time. This time I'm gonna make use of the cosine function and I am going to reference the angle at position five in the stack and that returns zero as expected. Now, this can also be used, for example, if we were using the Pythagorean identity here. So if I wanted to take the sine of pi over three quantity squared plus the cosine of pi over three quantity squared, I would use dollar sign five to reference that angle and it returns one. So that is as expected. That's it. My name is Mark. Thank you for watching.